Okay. All right, hi, I'm Julia, and this year in ISM, I'm studying entrepreneurship. Um, this is my first year in ISM, and I have um, one younger brother and one younger sister. My brother goes is a sophomore here at Frisco. My um, sister is at Allen Elementary. I'm committed to Oklahoma State for soccer, and that's why I plan to continue my education. I love to ski, play soccer, and I'm always busy. I don't like the feeling of being bored, and I love to um, have something to do, and I'm always doing something. I just don't like being bored. Um, I decided to take ISM this year because I wanted to discover what I want to do in the future, and I didn't really know what I want to do. Like I didn't want. I knew I didn't want to be a doctor, but um, I just kind of wanted to figure out what I want to do. And I chose entrepreneurship because I was always fond of the idea that someone could own a business and run something, um, not necessarily by themselves. But um, I thought that was fun to work on like a lifelong project and um, keep. Um, making it better and my dad has also been an inspiration for me to pursue entrepreneurship because he once owned a business and he sold it and he was always having um, the freedom to do what he wanted and he was always working hard but it um, seemed fun to me to work on that project. My quote for this year is only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly by Robert F. Kennedy and this applies to me in two ways one on one entrepreneurship specifically and also my life it relates to entrepreneurship because uh, entrepreneurs, there's not one set way to do something. You have to try many different ways. You may fail a couple times, but that's how you learn. And that this quote applies directly to entrepreneurship. And also to me because I'm kind of the person that's afraid to fail and to make mistakes. But I just have to keep in mind this quote and think, well, someone's never going to do something great if you don't try anything new. On to my interviews. My first interview was mis with Mr. Person, and he created Coupon Media. It's um, a, a software where co consumers can um, get coupons for stores such as Target and Walgreens. And the m real thing that I learned from him was that you have to learn from your mistakes. He really emphasized this because he said he recalled over 50 mistakes that he made, um, ma whether minor or major, and that's how he learned. He's still successful. He's still, you know, pursuing his career and that's how he learned is from what he did wrong. My second interview was with Mr. Calandro who created the big game with Ali's dad and he makes footballs for colleges such as TCU, OSU and a lot more and I really learned from him that you can't be the best at everything. The entrepreneur, um, owner of a small business, you have to have people helping you. You can't run it all by yourself. So say if I was unorganized I could um, get someone to help me organize office or organize my goals for the future and just put everything together and that's really how you be successful is you have people helping you along the way. My third interview was a phone interview with Mr. Carter who is an app developer and he develops apps for companies such as Coca-Cola, Chick-fil-A, ESPN, History Channel and a lot more and um, he was really inspired me to like get out there and do something new because he said, do something that you're passionate about. And he, I could really tell that he was passionate about, about, about what he did because um, he just like put so much emphasis on like, oh, I started something new. Like I came up with the idea, I got to work. And he really taught me that you'll never be successful if you are doing something that you're kind of like or you kind of are good at. You have to find what you're really passionate about and um, go from there. My fourth interview was with Mr. Dallander and he created Snappy Salads and he was, um, he taught me that the seed of entrepreneurship is wouldn't it be great if the phrase that starts all small businesses, it come, it's an idea, it starts with an idea and it turns into something um, so big. So wouldn't it be great if there was a fast and easy salad place that people could stop on the way to work or wouldn't it be great if there was um, all these companies that have apps for iPhones and that's kind of how you get started. It's an idea that turns into reality and that's really what I learned from him. My fifth interview was with Mr. Thoma and he actually turned out to be my mentor. He owns the Float Spot which is like a hydro massage place and you can like help athletes recover or maybe help with sickness and people with arthritis and stuff. And it's really cool because he actually heard, overheard someone talking about it and so he did really hard research, extensive research for 13 months about how it can affect um, types of people and what the benefits are. And then he decided to open up a store where um, he has different 
little massage places and like a, a float tank in that one store. And I really learned from him that, um, and not necessarily entrepreneurs, but mostly the small business owners put in more work after five o'clock than in your, a lot of the professions. And this kind of taught me that it's not just a job, it's like a project, it's a lifelong project that you're working on, you're trying to advance it, and you're trying to make it better, and um, you're always constantly thinking about it. And I personally, I think that would be enjoyable if you just, you come up with new challenges and new obstacles to um, get over, and that's really what um, he taught me in this in interview. And so after all my research, I kind of went back and I, not I didn't really learn about how to actually own a business, but I learned the abstract thoughts of it. And I was like, well, can entrepreneurship really be taught? Can it really be taught in school? Can it really be um, shown how to do? And I, I asked all of the professionals that question, and they all said, no, it cannot. And so they basically said it can be nurtured in form. So you can taught you know, the rights and wrongs of business and the fundamentals, but not everyone has the drive and passion it takes to own a business. And that's, I thought it was interesting to me because, I mean, not everyone has it in them to do that. And I'm still figuring out if I would like that too. And so on to my original work, kind of the background of it, um, I was starting to think like, you know, what should I do with my original work? I knew I wanted to do something about the location of businesses and like how people decided to choose their, where they wanted to locate it. But I didn't know how to display what I learned so far because I hadn't met with my mentor and, um, I didn't really know really what to expect and how to present it. So I came up with like, maybe I could do a presentation or a map or a checklist, but those would all be kind of boring. And so I decided to make a website, but I needed to make it unique somehow. And I knew that I lived in Frisco all my life and I knew the city by the back of my hand. And in 2009, Frisco was one of the fastest growing nations in the city, which meant population growth of people and more businesses coming into Frisco. So I decided to restrict my website to Frisco only. So businesses would come in, use my website to um, find locations in Frisco where their business would be best for them. And so I started working on it. I took out, went out and took pictures of the spaces for lease around Frisco, put them on my website, did a little analysis of it, like this place would be great for a Froyo because it's um, near an anchor store such as Target or Walmart and it could attract you know, nearby shoppers and um, a little kid's trampoline place, so they want to get ice cream after trampoline. And um, so I presented it to my mentor when we confirmed it, and we talked about our ideas to make it better, and we added um, a section called Demographic Specialist, and we would get people, theoretically, we would get people that are um, experienced in the field of society, so say like an entertainment person, and you could contact them, and they would actually like meet with you and discuss like where would be best to put your type of business. And so this is the actual website and at the top you can see the different pages like home for sale, real time demographic specialist, research Frisco. And the for sale section is this and you, businesses can just come in and you just put in your information so such as fast food, um, chain type, square footage and you can get um, press submit and then it would show up all the suggested items just like a regular website and on the map you can press where the business locations for lease are and it will show up um, various other businesses in the area so you can see like competitors nearby and on the right side that's just the suggested leases um, below that then on the demographic specialist page this is where it really gets um, more specific because the businesses can actually contact these types of people. So say I am a person that owns a small business in like movie theaters and has the IMAX, you know, the big comfy chairs that allow you to um, like lay back in and it brings you food and stuff. But you want to put it in a place where it has a maximum amount of um, consumers. So you'd find the person that um, most likely would fit you. So maybe Mark McConaughey and specializing in business, food, and entertainment. So you contact him and you would just um, meet with him and he would tell you kind of the demographics and actually meet with you and even set up focus groups to help you um, get the real advice of Frisco residents. And that's kind of what we're looking, me and my mentor are looking for in the future is to do focus groups with the um, actual Frisco residents. And the benefits of this is that 
the businesses coming into Frisco, because there are so many and Frisco's growing so fast, is that they'll get the actual um, advice and input of the real Frisco residents rather than just, you know, paying money to do research over the demographics like population growth and um, income and age on the city. And the last page is a little bit about Frisco, and this is just where um, maybe someone just want a quick information, you know, facts on paper, you just look at the population. I got this from the, the Frisco website, actually, and um, this is just the information that you can quickly look at, such as population growth, and, and you can see that Frisco is growing exponentially. So. And this is my mentor, and I really, I learned a lot of things from him so far, and we've only met like four times, and there's not one way to do things. We um, talked about the different ways that we could make our website better. And there was like, well, maybe we could do f go directly through the website owner and do the focus groups from then, or we could go through the specialist and do it from then, or we could um, have focus groups ready and you just go directly through the focus group leader. So there's a lot of different ways to do it in owning a business. There's also a lot more than you think to owning a business. We actually, um, like, we took three salad shops, the Salad Stop, Salada, and Snappy Salads, and we compared the three, and we made our predictions before on which we think, you know, would be the best feeling in it, and like what was in the best location. And so I went to the first one, Salad Stop, and it was actually out of business because it was in a random place. It was in the back by 24-Hour Fitness. Couldn't see it from the street. It was too big for its size. It was felt empty throughout the whole entire place, and um, kind of spoke for itself that it ran out of business. Then Salada was in a pretty, a better place, but there was um, a lot of traffic in the area and it had a small parking lot. You went in, it was dull inside. It was brown tables, brown chairs, brown wall, and it felt like I could make the salad at home. And then Snappy Salads, it was right on the main street and it was easy to get to. You just pull right in on park and um, it wasn't too big. It even felt crowded at 4 p.m. So there's a lot more, even just to the location of a business than I thought there would be. And um, I also learned to use my resources. He um, had this Frisco community newspaper, and he brought it to me, and he was like, well, look how cool this is. Like, there's polls. So there was a poll and a survey of saying, like, what do you think a performing arts center would be beneficial? Like, why? And do you think it would be beneficial? And so it had um, answers of actual Frisco residents, and that would help me with my website in the future and you can use your resources to help you with your website and um, move forward with that. And for the future I want to, um, instead of doing the demographic specialist, we've kind of changed it now to doing focus groups so the businesses can contact um, us and then we can gather focus groups of actual real people, such just teenagers or moms or athletes and um, use, maybe even use the North Texas Enterprise Company to use their space, which is like this little um, company in Frisco that has convention rooms, and so we could just do it there, and even um, use Skype for out-of-town businesses um, seeking Frisco to come into Frisco, so they don't actually have to come to Frisco to do the focus groups. And um, we just have a lot of stuff to do for the final project, and hopefully making this the best website. And it's just a prototype now, but um, we're hoping to do a little sample of focus groups and for our final product. So thank you for listening.